If you think you're sticking it to Bud Light by having a Miller Night Light, you're not. Uh, Miller Light wants bars to have gender neutral bathrooms, gender neutral uniforms, and get rid of ID requirements for transgender people. Uh, just wait till you see this. It is written out. Uh, so you may just have to drink water because another beer company has proved itself to be manipulating the social agenda for something you may or may not want and may or may not have voted for. We've spoken at length about how Bud Light has been weathering an awful plunge in sales since partnering with transgender social media user Dylan Mulvaney to celebrate 365 days of womanhood. Now, over the weekend, Bud Light was mocked for this kind of sad coupon on uh, store shelves saying, oh, yeah. <laughs> please buy me. Please. You get 20 bucks back. We're going to literally, you buy this and you will get the case for free. That's how bad they're trying. I to think it's a rebate of some get, sort. Get I did not bucks, scan but. it. Um, but yes, people are saying that's kind of pathetic and sad. Now, sales of Bud Light and other Anheuser-Busch products fell 26% towards the end of April. Um, now, interestingly enough, sales of Coors Light were up 13% and Miller Light up 13%. So Miller Light is happy to collect on the spoils of Bud Light while saying nothing. Well, why have they said nothing? Uh, some brands are sort of dumbling down and saying, hey, we don't push gender ideology on you. We're just a beer. Here's our beer. We're not doing this. Miller Light is just kind of quietly existing and cashing in, but they really can't because they too have been participating in stakeholder capitalism. And I'm going to show it to you with a big fat emphasis on gender ideology. Stakeholder capitalism is when a company says that it is going to make decisions in the best interest of everyone and not just shareholders. We should not want that if you want to live in a democracy. You should not want powerful and rich people and companies uh, setting the social agenda for you. I don't want that anyway. Uh, it is a perversion of democracy. Now, Miller was called out recently for a commercial that I'm about to show you, but it goes much deeper than that. And I'm going to show that to you too. Um, hold on, because I'm going to show you some stuff. My friends, I'm going to show you some stuff. So here's the ad that was released in March before Bud Light had their woman face can. Here's a little known fact. Women were among the very first to brew beer ever. From Mesopotamia to the Middle Ages to colonial America, women were the ones doing the brewing. Centuries later, how did the industry pay homage to the founding mothers of beer? They put us in bikinis. Look at this wild. It's time beer made it up to women. So today, Miller Lite is on a mission to clean up not just their but the whole beer industry's Miller Lite has been scouring the internet for all this and buying it back so that they can turn it into good for women brewers. Literally, good How you ask? Ladies, take it away. First, we turn the bad into compost. Then we feed compost to worms. Push out beautiful fertilizer. That good sh helps farmers grow quality hops. Which has been donated to women brewers to make their own really good sh But there's definitely more sh out there. In your attic, in the garage, in your parents' basement. Send any sh you got into Miller Lite and they'll turn that into good sh too. Oh. So here's to women, because without us, there would be no beer. That, that was super fun. So Max Master in our chat says, blah, blah, stop nagging. Yeah, that's exactly what this ad was, nagging. Uh, it's condescending for many, many reasons. Um, yes. For starters, the claims that women have been brewing beer for longer than men. Um, well, the ancient Egyptians were the first to brew beer, and it was more like a wheat smoothie that you could feed to your kids for nutritional reasons. It is not like the women that we now, you know, reclaim it as the drink of goddesses. Like we were always drinking this. That's not true. Um, also claims that women were the ones to brew the beer as if hops magically appeared. You know, men were doing the farming, so it was a collaborative effort. Do we really want to play this like chicken and egg game of like where the beer came from? That's stupid. Um, I think it also discounts that many of those bikini clad women had a choice to pose for those. They made money. 
Um, you know, are we going to sort of drag them out like Game of Thrones and shame them in the street? Like Meghan Markle then, Sofia Vergara, we have to take all of them and say shame on you for posing for this bad shit is what they're calling it. Um, yeah, they made money and it wasn't like they were slaves to it. They no, yeah. they, they chose to do this. Um, and, and I feel like that's very condescending for anybody. Like we don't shame people for their bodies any longer. That's, that's not a thing. You know, I mean, the, the woke left goes out of their way not to do that. So why would we be shaming people for showing their bodies? Right. right? That's, that's a, a, that's another side of the body shaming coin. Now I was not actually able to find a donation website because I thought that I should take this one down, which is in my office based on this campaign. Um, because you know, we're not supposed to be objectifying bodies. Um, this is not really my office as a joke. Uh, the point is, though, that this one was put out just last year. We're, Miller Lite is not supposed to be objectifying bodies, right? But that one's okay. Why? Because this is part of Miller's Out and Proud campaign, which just launched last year. Um, it erroneously, in my opinion, lumps gay people together with transgender people, something I've discussed at length that I don't think these two groups are aligned at all. Um, and it comes with a guidebook, a full on guidebook. You can read it yourself telling bars that serve Miller Lite how to be inclusive spaces for LGBTQ plus communities. Although the accompanying video is careful to educate you that these are the initialism letters we've got right now, we may add many more or in the future, they are saying. Uh, here's the guidebook. The guide features tips for bars to create safe spaces for these communities. Uh, one of them is not playing offensive music. Uh, I have to wonder what that means if like music is eventually going to be overly gendered. David, I think you told me a story about like activists not liking the, the song Natural Woman, right? Mm -hmm. Aretha By Franklin. By Aretha yep. Franklin. Like, you know, there is sort of wording in there that makes you think that these gendered, you know, songs may eventually be considered something that bars shouldn't play. But they are more overt than that. Here's their section on gender inclusive bathrooms saying that pretty much, you know, any bar that has Miller Lite really should focus on gender inclusive bathrooms. They also say that the bar Boy. uniforms should not compromise gender identity as well. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I was looking in Portland the other day for a bar to, to go to, and all of them said trans safe space and LGBTQ plus friendly. Like that was like the top of the thing. Like that was the most important thing. Then the, the description of the bar and all that stuff. And I'm just like, that's, it, it's just becoming so prominent. And like, I don't, yeah. you know, like I just want to go have drinks and hang out. I don't care about all that stuff. Jesus. Yeah, I, I also notice it on um, Google Maps listings and... Really? Um, What's the one my mom likes to go on and ways? Not ways. I don't know. <laughs> Apple Maps? No, no, the review. Oh, Yelp. Yelp. My mom loves Yelp. 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 Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And yeah, I noticed that that also is something that's prominently listed now in, in business listings. Um, now it also says Miller is saying that, you know, the bars that their beer is served in should not have uniforms that compromise people's gendered identity. Um, and they should display this flag to make sure people know that it's a safe space. Now I'm sure, you know how, when you go into a bar, they have all kinds of tchotchke that say the beer brand, like the, that drainy thing that they put the cups on is always branded with like Hennessy or whatever. Mm -hmm. Or the towels have the coasters. The coasters yeah. will have um, schnapps or whatever. Schnapps. <laughs> what is a brand of? <laughs> I don't Heineken. Know. When was the last time you were in a I bar? Know. I know. <laughs> Hennessy schnapps. These are neat. Well, <laughs> seven God. and seven Seagram seven. That's something oh my, my dad used to drink. Do people drink that anymore? I don't know. Seven and seven. Let yes. me know in the chat. I haven't been yep. to like a yeah. I haven't been to like a college bar. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, um, so I'm thinking that because I know that bits and bobs around the bar are usually branded, that like certainly Miller Lite is going to come and give you this gender neutral, open and proud sign. Or, you know, um, you see this flag is the melding of the uh, lesbian gay pride flag with the gender ideology flag. Um, they are merged together, merged in all in one spot. Um 
Now, here's a guideline I found really interesting for transgender people who don't have the proper ID. Uh, screw the state laws. Let's just let them in. Now, it says oftentimes, you know, you need to let your bar staff know that if the person's ID does not match their current name or photo, then you have to be sensitive to that. You can't tell them no, even though the state law says they must have a matching ID. Instead, here's a little tip. Ask them their birthday to avoid unintentional disrespect. Now, if you are using a fake ID, not that I've ever done that, but I know that if you do that, you memorize the birthday, right? So then this, like, this is a nightmare. My father owns a bar in uh, San Francisco Bay Area. It is a liability nightmare. Can you imagine now being told, don't be so hard and fast on those IDs? You know, you can play, you can play wide and loose with those. No, I was at the University of Pittsburgh and I can re clearly remember there was a bar on, right in Oakland where I went to the University of Pittsburgh where I, it wasn't the night we were there or anything, but it was like another night and they, there was a whole bunch of underage people that were there apparently. And, uh, whatever group comes in, I don't know what law enforcement, you guys know, maybe it's state to state. Um, who comes in and does the enforcement of it? Is it alcohol? It's not. Yeah. Cause that's, that's state to state. Cause in, in Oregon it's the OLCC, the Oregon liquor, yeah, liquor control like, or whatever. Yeah. Maybe. So I don't know what it is in Pennsylvania. Anyway, they came in and busted him. And if they found, I think it was like more than three violations of people being underage, they uh -huh. come in, they lock the doors and they're like, you're not getting out of here because oh, people try to scary. jump out windows and stuff like that. And the bar went out of business. I mean, they were closed. They shut them down. So it's a huge liability. But this, this Miller Lite handbook is like disregard looking at their... <laughs> you imagine? Just like because they might be trans. You have pictured IDs. It's like, oh my uh, God. No, no, no more need for pictured IDs. Why right. do we even need pictures on them anymore? Jesus. I mean, yeah. And, and can you imagine a bar then being held liable for that? Like you go in and this agency is like, if we see more than three people whose IDs don't match, well, that's okay. Cause they're transgender. Oh, well then as you were, that's, that's okay. That's you fine. Know? Um, and then if that's the case, then any ID should pass. Then, you know, like my 11 year old should be able to use mine. I'm 44. Yeah. Right. And vote or whatever. Like this is crazy. This is crazy talk. Um, and of course, not all of these things are malintentioned to be sure, but they, uh, this is a beer company suggesting a reordering of society for stakeholder capitalism. Uh, they certainly seem to be advocating breaking the law around ID use. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this bad shit to good shit landing page has been removed the ad that we showed you earlier, but the out and out, out and proud page where you can find this handbook for yourself is still live. You can go to millerlightcom slash open dash proud. You can see for yourself. I did not make this up. Uh, well, now I just want to point out too how the campaign is it's, it's virtue signaling because if you did the math for the pounds of things that they said they were going to get, and they were going to divide it up between 200 breweries, each woman would have got a 50 pound bag of fertilizer. What is 50, 50 pounds going to grow you as far as hops and all that? Like, it's like, it's yeah. kind of like, oh, thanks for this 50 pound bag of. Right. And it's vermiculture. Magazine. It's not even yeah. like, like chopped up. Yeah. Chopped up with ink on it. That's no, no, no. It's yeah. vermiculture. They said well, they're going to, they're going to give it to worms. Oh, oh, oh okay. It was worms, like worm tea. Yeah. Uh, and so well, the worms so will eat the bikini pictures is if, if I'm understanding this correctly they're going to compost it down and the worms will eat it and then it's the the pee and poo of the worms okay. that will create uh, a, a compost that That's is great. is very good but i don't know if it's very good for worms to eat plastic posters well, i was going to say they I still secrete the chemical any chemical they intake they're going to have to output it's not like it's not like the chemicals just magically disappear because it's a worm body the, right? the only thing i could think of because i do know a little bit about composting is that it's the ashes is that they'd burn it, uh, which then gives me a headache about, you know, burning plastic because of the fumes. So like, this is not a green initiative. No, no one's really thought this through. That's, this is ridiculous. Uh, Miller Lite have hasn't. We have, we have composting worms here. So we, we put, we do put paper and things in there, but it's not, yeah. you know, inked paper. Yeah. Right. Do you put ashes? Uh, yes. So. Yeah. Uh, it, we put ashes in our compost too, but we don't use worms. Um, so anyway, that's, that's that, uh, you know, it seems like Miller Lite is sticking to this, uh, you know, the, 
this campaign. And so if you think you're really like sticking it to the man by not having a Bud Light and having a Miller Light, you're not. You're not. Uh, Raging Oracle in our chat says, you all reject this trash on the internet, but are too cowardly to reject it in person. This is why we losing. This is why we losing, Raging what, Oracle why? says. No, I think it's a good I th It's because David was pointing out, and I think we were talking about like when you go into these bars and you see this kind of stuff and you see this woke stuff, like do you speak up about it in public or is it just on the internet where we talk about it? Everyone, the thousands of people in our chat are upset about this. But when you go out into the world, do you let people know about this? Do you let the beer distributor where you're buying your beer say, I'm not buying this Bud Light anymore. Why are you stocking this stuff anymore? Or do you tell the bar that has all of this woke stuff on its walls that I don't, you know, this is not, this is not helping. Well, well I, the do you thing speak is, out about it? Do you is speak that out boycotting about it? is also practicing stakeholder capitalism. Yeah. So not buying Bud Light and not buying Miller Light, ever, you know, never watching Fox well, News again after they fire Tucker Carlson. Like these are all ways of showing stakeholder capitalism, right? N no. Yeah, you can, I mean, these you are all ways of um, silent. This is how capitalism works. This is all way of, of, of driving their stock into the ground. Because not no, really. if you look at the, the number not. of like, it's, it's a very small minority that does this stuff. And like, look at these little shops that are like, there was a place that opened that did a 20% man tax. Well, they went out of business because like, they don't have a big enough clientele to keep it running. So you almost have to be, you know, like half into that world because you're going to lose a lot of business. I mean, Bud Light was the first time that that ventured into people that didn't even discuss politics before. And all of a sudden it messed with their beer. And I went to a, a local small bar to play pool the other day. And these people were like, don't order Bud Light. Like they were like taking that seriously. And now they're going to be saying, don't drive Mil by Miller Light. So, you know, that is a way to stop this stuff is just by not buying stuff, boycotting it. You don't have to uh, okay, say something, go in but... there and, and tell people off. Let, yeah. let me play devil's advocate because transgender and, um, you know, uh, transgender advocates were upset with Disney because Disney didn't stop the don't say gay bill. And so they were saying we're going to boycott Disney until Disney gets involved. Isn't that them, that boycott participating in stakeholder capitalism? You're telling a company to do something. Right. And so yes. a boycott is stakeholder capitalism, too, in a way, if you're out there saying no one should buy it, it is not if you're like, this doesn't speak to me, this upsets me, I don't buy it. Right. So if you're telling other people to boycott if it, if you're starting a campaign, you're also saying, I want this company to reorder society my way. Right. Right. So not be, not be woke and left, but be now I'm like, I'm a cowboy and I drink well, beer. Well, it's different. I, like, yeah. you know, you, there's a, like, let's say that you have a hairdresser, you think he's racist and you're like, I don't want to go to him anymore because I don't want to hear his racist joke. But if you tell everybody else and start a campaign about this, like, let's shut down his livelihood, let's change society, that's different. So there's, you know, we have to accept responsibility for not wanting companies to do stakeholder capitalism, but then we can't do it either. We can't say, well, then everybody boycott and then we order society our way. It's about our individual choices. Um, like, here's an example. One of my children, you know, has upcoming uh, sex education in their school and they wrote me about it. And I wrote back and said, I need to be assured that they will have sex education in single sex spaces if they are, because they did say they're separating the boys and the girls. And I needed to make sure that it was biological boys and girls, because I will not have one of my children put into sex education where they're teaching about their reproductive system as an optional part of their gender. I can't have that. And so I'm not saying everyone should boycott it. I'm not saying like what to do, but I will be the person who puts my money where my mouth is and tells the school, this is important. And the school, you know, was receptive to that and, and assured me that they are being separa separated by biological gender. So yeah, this, this is a fine line. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.